Hi everyone, welcome back to Mostly Math. Today we'll actually be investigating a few elementary properties of the Verdinger derivatives, which we introduced on a previous video. They're defined as the differential operators d by dz is one half d by dx minus i d by dy. And the conjugate operator d by d star is one half d by dx plus i d by dy. We are going to actually verify today that these partial derivatives behave on a function of f and z of z star, same way as an ordinary partial derivative would if we write out z as x plus i y and z star as x minus i y respectively, of course. We are going to start with a few simple cases. There's not gonna be any kind of rigorous proof in this video, just uh, Few, few special cases. All right. We are now going to start with the case of dz by dz star. If we use the formula that we have here, one half d by dx plus i d by dy is the dz star operator acting on z simply x plus i y, like I mentioned earlier, becomes one half. The x operator acting on x is one, operating on y is zero, of course. And the i dy operator acting on x is zero, but we have i squared dy by dy, which is one. This is minus one, of course. So in this first example, we see that this instruction is telling us that z is not a function of z star. They are, in fact, independent in this sense. If you evaluated dzz star, dz star by dz, you would also find that at zero as well. You can feel free to check this um, for your understanding. And we're actually going to do that now just so you can, so you can see it. All right, the dz operator, well, that is going to be same thing as above with a minus sign, d by dx minus i d, d by dy. And the z star um, is just the same thing with a minus sign. So because we put two minus signs, you can see how they could cancel out to become the same relation here. One half dx by dx is one zero for the y term. The minus i dy operator acting on x is zero. And if we do it on the y, we get minus i squared, which is just i squared equal to negative one. So it becomes zero again. So the z and the z star operators are independent in this sense. And now we're going to evaluate a slightly trickier case. We're going to see how it works with d by dz of z, z star. All right, so the first part is easy, the same operator as above. And for the next part, you should know the identity z, z star is just equal to x plus i, y, x minus i, y, which if you FOIL this out, simply x squared plus y squared. And we can write this here. Now, when we take the x operator and act it on the x squared plus y squared, we get a 2x term and we get a minus i. And the y operator gets a 2y. The twos cancel. This is simply x minus i y, which you should recognize as z star. So it behaves the way that you think it would with the product. If we take, you know, a product of these variables, obviously it's going to generalize to any number of variables, so we're not going to prove this. d by dz of z z star is, is simply z star, exactly what you would expect it to be. Now let's do a slightly more advanced example. Basically just examples in this video. I think it's important to go through the examples because if you see these in the more abstract context, you might lose sight of 
why they were defined this way in the first place. Basically, they were defined this way so that these relations would hold. And we're just checking a few of them today. We're going to evaluate d by dz of z squared. Hopefully, um, we obtain the result that is 2z from elementary calculus. Let's see if we do. All right, z squared. Z squared is simply x plus i y squared, which if you foil it out is x squared minus y squared plus 2i x y, which we can simply put here. Of course, the minus sign here comes from the fact that i squared is negative 1 by definition. All right, if we do this, one half. The x term gives us a 2x from this term and a 2iy from the second term. The i d by dy operator gives us a minus 2y from the first term and a plus 2ix from the second term. And we see that nothing is actually canceling here. Sub the twos, x plus i y, and this first term here. This one here, well, it's just gonna be minus i squared is equal to one, of course. So we get another factor of x plus i y, which is just 2 x plus i y, which is just 2z. So that's awesome. In terms of the monomial or the, uh, the power rule holds in the case of n equals 2, we would like to show that it holds in the general case, so we want to show that d by dz of z to the n is equal to nz n minus 1. Uh, there are a few ways to proceed at this point. A more complicated way, which I myself have never satisfactorily been able to solve, is to expand x plus i y to the n in a binomial expansion. So that's, you know, binomial coefficients, x to the n, i y to the n minus k. This is just really messy. I'm sure that you can do it. it. I've spent an embarrassingly large amount of time on it and I wasn't able to do it. So I'm going to present to you a different method in this video. I'm going to use the chain rule actually, which you could do in the n equals two example. I think it's just more illustrative if I expand it out since we don't actually have to use the binomial expansion. Sorry, tripping over my microphone cord here. All right, let's go ahead and proceed with d by dz of z to the n, which is just going to be um, one half d by dx minus i d by dy z to the n, x plus i, y to the n. Now, instead of expanding this out by the binomial theorem, instead I'm going to distribute the differential operators to both of them and use the chain rule. So, if I do this, it's going to be one half. We have n, x plus i, y, n minus one here, this is with the d by dx operator, and the derivative of z with respect to x is one, so no term needed there. And if we do the minus i d by dy of this, just gonna be n x plus i y to the n minus one, here we do need a factor of i, since the derivative of this with respect to y is actually i. We see that i squared is negative one, 
So it just becomes one half times two of this thing, which is simply nx plus iy to the n minus one, which we can of course recognize as nz to the n minus one. And this is a proof of the power rule for the Verdinger derivatives. It, it may seem like cheating because I didn't use the binomial theorem, but I would argue that we already know the chain rule works for the real differential operators. I see no reason why I can't apply them to complex combinations of the real differential operators, at least from an applied math point of view. And that's basically what I had to show you today. Uh, there are, of course, more powerful theorems which say that for an arbitrary function of f and z, z star, you can prove things like d by dz of, of the f is, is simply equal to, see, it's hard to even write it out, to be honest, equal to what you would expect it to be, basically, to be like the total derivative of, of f with respect to z or something like that, holding z star constant. But that's not something that I am going to care about here. In fact, from an applied math point of view, I would say that since we have proven it for the monomials, we can, we can write the f and of z and z star is equal to some power series. And I have two sums, there's gonna be some coefficients, z minus some radius to the n, and then plus another sum, other coefficients, z star minus some other radius to the n. And since I've proven that it holds for these functions, it'll hold for these functions, uh, there is some ambiguity and subtlety because n typically goes from minus infinity to infinity in these kind of Laurent series. In fact, it's a, a double Laurent series. So I'm not gonna be talking about that today, but hopefully if you're interested, you can look up some of the literature about the Verdinger derivatives and learn more. If you enjoyed this one and see more, please subscribe. See you next time.